So have you ever wondered what percussion music actually looks like? I mean, for winds, brass, and string instruments, it's pretty straightforward. You have a staff with lines and clefs, and you can easily tell the pitch based on the position. But with percussion, you have all sorts of different auxiliary instruments, and some don't even have a definite pitch. So how are you supposed to notate that as a composer? So today's video is all about uncovering what percussion music looks like, and for drum set, and as well as for the orchestral instruments, in case you're unaware or just curious about this because I definitely was when I was first starting out in band back in what fourth grade so we're gonna split this video into two parts the first part is about rock pop and jazz music and then the second is about orchestral percussion and we're gonna uncover the differences the similarities between them and how you should probably notate them in different ways you can see these notations um, as well as some live demonstrations from yours truly. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. But before we get to that, let's talk about some disclaimers and things we should be made aware of uh, to get us into this percussion world and how to notate the instruments. So for starters, what we use for percussion music is called the percussion clef. It's five lines just like a treble clef or a bass clef or an alto clef. And you're gonna have notes just like any other clef an instrument but the way that differentiates the instruments in the percussion section is the shape of the note heads as well as the vertical position of those note heads. And you have to keep in mind there are some common standards and conventions that composers and publishers have used for these instruments uh, but let's keep in mind that these are not set in stone and there's always room for differences and in interpretations and you'll see that as we go forward. And as we get into the different sections of this video uh, this is an important disclaimer, but I am not a percussionist or a drummer, and I'm not claiming to be, so if you are and you see me struggle to properly play a beat on the drum set or using orchestral percussion technique, you've been warned. But anyways, we hope you enjoy, and let's get into the first segment. Part 1. Rock, Jazz, and Pop Music So to demonstrate drum music, uh, for rock, jazz, and pop, you're, we're going to be using the drum set, which is very common. Um, usually, the drum set is used uh, very commonly in these genres, but of course you have things like drum machines and other ways of producing uh, like an electronic drum sound, but for the sake of simplicity uh, and just using acoustic instruments for this video, drum set is going to be our main thing. Now let's go back to that percussion clef. There's these five lines, and each of these lines and different shapes of note heads indicate what part of the drum set we can use. So let's start with the basics. The snare drum is usually this note head. It's a regular note head, and it is on the uh, C line if we're thinking about a treble clef. Uh, and that is usually the common place to have the snare drum notated. Sometimes you might have it on the middle line, um, but the, the important thing to keep in mind is it's just a regular note head. and that's what you usually will see. And this is the same for orchestral percussion snare, and we will see that soon. For bass drum, it's usually a normal note head too, but on a different lower position. And this is also called the kick drum on a drum set. Bass drum, kick drum, kind of the same thing. And usually it is gonna be lower on the staff because uh, this is just kind of a general uh, piece of advice, but the higher something is on the staff, usually the higher pitched it is. Um, while it not, may, may not produce an actual, uh, you know, uh, pitch or tone, it's usually easy to distinguish if it's like a higher pitch sound or a deeper, lower sound. So the kick drum is very deep and uh, broad, so that's why it's lower. The other types of drums are the toms. We have some uh, the high toms and then the floor toms. So those are notated on the spaces and sometimes on lines, but keep in mind, normal note heads for these. You're not gonna have anything weird or wacky going on. They're just the normal note heads. Um, but the position of them are kind of variable, but these are the common ones you'll usually see. Now let's move on to the symbols. We're gonna start with the hi-hat, uh, which is one of the more complicated uh, symbols of the bunch because you can have them either open or closed, and that's notated with a plus or an O sign. Um, but usually this is omitted and sometimes you might see a different type of diamond note head to indicate whether it's open um, but yeah it depends but usually 
uh, it's an X-shaped node head compared to just the regular filled-in one. And that's kind of, uh, this X-shaped node head is what you usually see for all sorts of different types of symbols. Now, exception to this is something I see usually is if you have some kind of um, snare, uh, like cross stick or some kind of um, uh, special snare effect with the, the uh, actual drumstick that can also be notated with an X. And uh, yeah, that's what you usually see if you have that. This is kind of like a quieter um, sound compared to actually hitting the snare on its head. This is if you just use the stick. Um, and that's what you usually will see. So the symbols I have on this kit were the crash symbols, the ride symbols, and a splash symbol. And those are all X-shaped note heads, but the, the relation to uh, the staff and their vertical position is what differentiates them. So these are some of the common ones you'll see and their positions. And sometimes on uh, other kits, you'll have different types of symbols. Um, but these are the most common ones you'll see. So for the ride symbol, there's also a special effect you can do or just a technique is by hitting the dome of the ride symbol, which is just called the ride bell. And that's usually notated like this, but there's different ways of saying it, but this is what you usually will see. So there's some special techniques you can do with these symbols. Uh, probably the most common one is the uh, suspended rolled symbol. Uh, so if you take a pair of yarn mallets and then you roll them, I'm doing on the crash symbol here, then you'll get a really cool suspended sound and that allows you to create cool effects like crescendo or diminuendo and kind of build up and have some atmosphere to your sound. And if you want to use different types of sticks for the drum set, that is just usually indicated with just some special text at the beginning of the score to let the drummer no. And for jazz music, you usually will see not exact notation, not everything written out verbatim, but sometimes you'll get cues and different hits for different instruments. If you're in like a big band, usually you'll just get um, this type of slash note head and that indicates a hit that you have to, to make or usually there might be um, these four dashed lines for improvising in like a swing style and then maybe there's some fills here and there. Um, but there's also an important disclaimer here that some of you might be commenting right now about is that, you know, for rock, jazz, and pop music, you're probably not going to have written out sheet music. It's usually just the drummer um, doing their own thing in the style you want, and you usually won't see this. Um, and I totally agree. Uh, but in some educational ensembles like a high school jazz band, you will definitely see some kind of music for the drummer and you might see it with um, some other genres some more popular music but again yeah that is a good point there that you might not have sheet music for these you know types of genres with exception to like in the school or educational group but we're going to move on to orchestral percussion which is quite the opposite we're actually going to have percussion that is written out almost exactly just as the composer wants part two orchestral percussion Yes, so again, orchestral percussion is usually written out. It's very precise in its notation, and everything will probably be written out for you. Um, and they use a lot of the same things from a drum set, like the snare and then the bass drum and cymbals. Um, but then we also get a whole load of different auxiliary instruments. And uh, there are a ton of them, and some of them are also used in jazz as well, but usually they got their origin from the orchestra. So we're gonna talk about some of those today. So there's different auxiliary instruments and auxiliary is simply instruments that are not part of standard battery or mallet or keyboard instruments in the percussion section. And some of the common ones uh, are like shakers, um, things like wood blocks, uh, metal instruments like triangles, things like that. You're gonna have different shaped note heads as well as different positions on the staff to indicate what those instruments are and usually these are this is more common in orchestral band music you're gonna have labels and text that will usually say what the instrument is just as a reminder for the conductor looking at the score um, instead of memorizing all the different shapes of these note heads which are different in every piece um, usually they'll just have a label right on top of them for their entrance and sometimes in the beginning of the score you'll have a percussion key or some kind of map that will put all these percussion uh, notation labels and note heads in the beginning 
to uh, make sure you're all familiar with it. And just a little note about the five line staff, the percussion clef we've been talking about. Sometimes you might get single line staffs. Um, this is usually more common in older scores. Uh, if you just have like a single snare drum or a crash cymbal, usually you'll just have a single line. Or you might even have two lines where it would be like uh, bongos and you just have the two lines instead of having all five. Um, but usually what I prefer is using all five if I can. Um, and that's usually just a good way to, to you a good rule of thumb really, but you do see that sometimes, so just keep that in mind. So if you're interested in the idea of having really clean notation and how composers write the music that they do, and different ways to write it, then I have a video of all about the importance of notation, and I have my friend who demonstrates some of the principles uh, that I mentioned in that video about having clean notation. So just check that out and it's going to be a great watch. But anyways guys, thanks for watching and keep writing.